Gig Gab, the show for working musicians, episode 390 for Tuesday, July 18th, 2023. <music> Greetings, folks. And welcome to Gig Gab, the show by, for, and about working musicians. Sponsors for this episode include HelloFresh.com slash Gig Gab 50, where geek code Gig Gab 50 gets you 50% off plus free shipping. We'll talk more about how you can do that and why you're going to do that and all that good stuff in a little bit. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. Here today in Santa Cruz, California, it's Paul Kent. <laughs> hey, man, you're, you're the... Uh, you're the California traveler is what you've, what you've become. You just run up I and really down the have. state. Yeah. Yeah. R up and down the coast, the whole center of the coast. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got us, you got us covered out there. I appreciate that. So yeah, you got it. Man. Yeah. Yeah. We, um, had an interesting, interesting week. And the first, um, the first thing that was weird was on Friday, it rained for like a half hour at one o'clock in the afternoon and the club that we were supposed to play canceled the gig for that night, even though the weather looked great and and then was great. You know, the forecast looked great and then the weather actually was great for the night. But um, so we had our, our Friday gig canceled for weather, which which is a bummer. I mean, it happens in New England. It's been raining a ton this year, uh, but it, it didn't have to happen on Friday, which was kind of a bummer. Yeah, I always say that I'm if you cancel a gig at three in the afternoon, you're my favorite person because you just gave me the, you know, the evening free. This was one of yeah. those gigs I was really looking forward to playing. My friend Maddie is back. Wait, wait. Yep. Would you have been pay how does how do you guys usually work in a, in a weather yep. volatile climate? Do you get paid if they cancel or or half or or what's the deal? Great question. So this is through uh, Paul Costley's booking agency. Paul is no longer running it. He handed it off to someone else. But uh, it, it's still the same deal that it's always been, which for these outdoor gigs is they have until 3 p.m. the day of the gig to cancel for no with no uh, financial commitment. Right. And and generally for weather. I mean, if they start canceling for the wrong reasons, well, you know, then then they fall off a of pulse list. Right. But um, after three o'clock, uh, you they are committed for 50 percent. And when you arrive, the the procedure is you check in with whoever the person in charge is, confirm that everything's still a go. And at that point, once they've confirmed, a.k.a. once you start loading in and setting up, they are on the hook for the whole thing, even if it you know, starts pouring or they cancel or whatever before you ever play a note of music. So that, so no, we did not get paid for, for Friday. It was canceled before the, you know, before the time, which ha it's just, it. you know, it, it's, it, it's a bummer, but you know, when, when they're only employing that clause for weather related stuff, it makes sense. Nobody gets to control the weather. It, at least we don't know who, who that person is. <laughs> so, so it was a bummer, but, uh, it happens. And so fine. Um, I did have two gigs on Saturday and the one on Saturday afternoon, even by that point on Friday was already shaping up to be a big, big question mark because, uh, it was the first gig that Uptown Celebration would have played since 2019. Uh, it was the first gig with our new singer, the first gig with our new bass player. And so there was a lot of firsts. Oh, and it was a gig, but also our first gig that I had played with the band. And I, I think maybe even the band's first gig without a sound engineer. So we were doing our own sound and it, there were lots of firsts going on at the same time. So it's like, okay. And then on Wednesday, our bass player told us, hey, so uh, I've felt terrible all week and I'm not really getting better as quickly as I would like it. He says, it turns out it's COVID and it turns out my, my entire band, but also everyone who was in the club that I played on the previous Saturday all came down with COVID. And it was like, okay. And he's like, so I don't think I'm going to be ready for this gig. Like, I don't think I'm going to be able to do this gig on Saturday. I was like, okay, cool. So it's a, it's a private 
it was, yeah, it was a private gig at uh, Wentworth by the sea, which is a, a sort of a, a high end hotel. And it was like the members only portion of this at their Marina. It, it you know, it was very, this very exclusive sort of party. I mean, it was a very laid back party, but it, the, you know, the people that were there were, were the sort of the, you know, they, they're in the club. Right. So it was like, Oh man. Okay. So what should we do? And, uh, our singer said, Oh, Hey, my brother plays bass and he's really good. Like she really built him up. You know, he, he's, he can read. He's like, he's, he's going to be great. He knows half of our set list already. He will chart the rest. He's in, let's still do the gig. I was like, well, against better judgment. Sure. Let's go and do it. Right. So we did the gig. Got set up. It was a laid back gig, you know, in terms of the expectations uh, of the crowd. I mean, we we still treated it very professionally because that's what we do. But it was not um, in their mind. It was not high stakes. Right. It, it was in our mind. But in their mind, it, it was the stakes were lower perceived by them than by us, which I guess is a good thing. It should always be that way. But, uh, but let me ask you a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you say in your mind, it was high stakes. Was it high stakes because everybody's trying to figure out who what is this band that hasn't paid together in so many years? High stakes just because you're getting paid well and, and you want to do a good job. Like, what, in the ranking of, of things that could yeah. make it high stakes, what was it at the top of that ranking? Well, it, yes, there was the, the they, I don't think they knew how long it had, had been since this band played. You know, we, we, we don't, we don't, we don't lead with that. Right. In the, in the marketing. No, no, I mean, high stakes right? internally, like, like yes. our guy, people in the band, like we haven't done this in a while. Is this going to be okay? Is, it, is this going to be okay? And also we haven't done it with this lineup. So what is it going to be like? You know, there was, right. there was that question as well. Like how is, how is, you know, our new uh, female singer, how's Steph going to be on stage? We've literally never been on stage with her before. We don't know. How's our new bass player going to be on stage? How are, are the new arrangements that we think we've worked out? How are they going to be? You know, like, wh- how's the flow right. going to be? All those, all those things, right? And so uh, there was those high stakes. And then, yes, it was a high paying gig as as they generally are. And so, you know, we feel a responsibility. I, and again, we talked about this last week, you know, regardless of, the pay, like we're there. So th- there is that level of stakes. Right. So, um, so we get there and, and, you know, meet the bass player and he seems good, but we don't really get a sound check. We played a little bit of a groove of like some, uh, I don't know, Tom Petty tune or something as a sound check. And it was like, okay, like, Hey, we locked in, like guy can keep time. His tone is good. He like, he's following along. He's paying attention. Like, all right. Like, yeah. Okay, great. And, uh, and then we started the gig. And, uh, things were going great. It was like, you know, we talked through things before we played the first set. I said, all right, I, I pulled my, my madhouse experience forward and I'm like, okay, the most important things are the beginnings and the ends of every song. So we talked through the set list. Here's how this one starts. Here's how this one ends. Right. And everybody, it it was good for all of us, but especially for our, for Joe, our, our sub bass player who, whom we had just met, you know? And, uh, so we talked through all that. Okay, great. Things are going fine. Third or fourth song of the set is uh, Stevie Wonder's Superstition. And, uh, you know, maybe halfway through that song, Joe's bass amp stops making sounds. Now, we had run Joe also through a DI into the house so that we could put him in the, the you know, in the subs and stuff. And also so those of us on in-ears could hear him if we wanted to. And so we were able to compensate for this, but his amp blew out. Like his speaker just blew out. That was the end of that. So we, you know, rejiggered the sound, which again, we were doing ourselves. uh, Did you have to take a a break from the set? No. Was this mid set? No, we just, you know, Marty, our singer, uh, he went out and listened and kind of, you know, bumped up the bass and the mains. And and that was that, right? We just kept on trucking. Uh, Because the gig was short too. It was three to five. Uh, you know, we were, we, had, we played two sets, but we started at three and we ended at five. Like it was not, you know, three to five thirty or whatever. So, um, so we really didn't have time to, to mess around and it went fine on the set break. And, and Joe played, he blew me away. He had prepared like a pro he had, I mean, he had charts for everything. He was reading the charts, but he was hitting like all of these syncopated things that, 
uh, took us a while in, in rehearsal to get right and all of this. And he was just nailing it. You know, we, we play that, uh, that jump, the, the Van Halen tune. And that's got yeah. a lot of weird syncopated things between the bass and the drums. It's just, it's a weird song. You know, you think you know it until you go to try to play it. And then it's like, oh, I actually, I need to work on this, you know? <laughs> and uh, I think I even talked about it years ago where like, that's one of the few things where I keep the drum part that like the music for the drum part written out in my iPad for the guitar solo. Cause it's this really weird thing. And the, and the accents fall on off beats in weird places and not, it doesn't follow a pattern and you know, it's just a weird thing. He nailed every one of those. He also nailed the intro of the song, which has the drums and the bass hit starting on the end of four. And I was, as, as our keyboard player started, I'm like, oh, you know, we didn't really talk about this. I wonder, <laughs> I wonder if he, I'm like, I'm going to do my part and whatever he does doesn't matter. You know, it's just, we're just going to keep going, it, you know? And I did it and it was like, oh my gosh, he was like right there with me the whole time. I was like, okay, like, yeah, this guy's got this. So he did great. He did great. Um, on the set break, our keyboard player in his car had an extra combo amp. So we were able to, you know, have some bass on stage with us too, which was really good. Um, we didn't wind up because of the bass amp thing. We didn't wind up talking through the, uh, the second, you know, the starts and ends for the second set, which I didn't realize until we were halfway through the first song. I was like, oh, so we missed out on that. Well, let's see how we do. <laughs> and it, it mostly went fine. There was one song that was a little bit of a train wreck because he just didn't have the groove right. And it never really locked in uh, that, that we, we play the cover of, of Valerie that Mark Ronson and, and Amy Winehouse did. Uh, we play kind of their version of it. And he, it just, it never locked in, but we made it through to the end and it was fine. People were like, that was great. We're like, okay, sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. It was. Thanks for saying that. You know, it's very kind, but, um, well, but you're, rem you're reminded, aren't you? That yep. the level of nuance that you're 95% of your audience is, is, is scrutinizing you with is really maybe. Yeah. 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 Maybe. I mean, you know, I, we talked about our sub or our sub situation yeah. the last couple of weeks. I was thinking about and you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's, um, you want to get it right because you take pride in what you do. But I, I, one of the best musicians, my friend Steve French, you know, he'll be like, nobody died. Nobody <laughs> died. Like, That's correct. That's correct. Yeah. 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 It's true. It's true. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the gig went fine. And then, um, they told us they wanted us back. They're going to hire us for a bunch of other things. So it was all the right, you know, it all went as, as far as they were concerned, they got exactly what they wanted. And then some, which is really like, like you were just saying, like, that's the, that's the goal, uh, as far as yeah. I'm concerned. And then from there, that was down in like Hampton, New Hampshire, or wherever, wherever that place is, um, along the seacoast. From there, I had to drive 90 minutes down to Boston to play this gig in, uh, the, the, it was a, a gig with Fling. It was a power pop night at some club south of Boston. Uh, and it was like, why are we doing this? Uh, two days before the gig, we were opening for a band called the Grip Weeds. And, uh, they're a band. They've got a little bit of a, I think they're on a label. Uh, they've got a little bit of a following. They were doing a little bit of a sort of Northeastern tour. And it was like, okay, like they're great. And they're a great band. They've got brother harmonies. Their drummer sings most of their tunes. Their guitar player uh, is his brother. They've got, you know, those sibling blood harmonies and uh, good band. They play about half covers, half originals uh, in their set. It's like, okay, this will be, you know, it's a good fit for fling. Sure. Let's go do it. Two days before the gig. So at the same time that I'm getting the news about our bass player uh, in Uptown, <laughs> uh, I'm getting the news that for some reason, and I still don't know the reason here, the uh, person organizing the event is like, oh yeah, you know, uh, we were going to, they were going to have, there were three bands. They were going to have fling go on second. Obviously the grip weeds, the headliner was going to go on third. We get a, a communication from them, whatever it is. Hey, uh, the schedule's going to change. Fling's going on last. And I'm like, why? Like, and last was 1030 at night. Like it wasn't, 
Ooh. It wasn't like, but it wasn't like two in the morning, like, it, oh, you know, you're getting screwed into the, like the, the band doesn't want to stay that late or whatever. Every band stayed around for the whole night. Like it, that, that part, that wasn't the reason as far as I could tell. It was just like, why are they moving us from 930 to 1030? Like, why would you have the headliner go on before us? Like, what a weird thing. And so I was, I was sort of, I was rubbed the wrong way about that because I felt like we were like, for some reason, just being like moved around uh, to accommodate something that didn't make sense to me, you know? So I was, I went into this a little pissy and, uh, you know, also I had to drive like 90 minutes to go and stand around in this club for a couple hours before I got to play. And I was like, I was exhausted because yeah. we played out in the heat and, you know, and so it was fine. So I, I, I kept all that in check. It was fine. And the opening band was, was, they're, they're fine, you know, and then the grip weeds played and they're a really good band. Um, that, you know, they, they sounded good. They've got good songs, good arrangements, great harmonies, as I said. And that really kind of inspired me. I, I was like, okay, like they're good. We're, we have to be better than them. Like th this, this is our opportunity to, to level up here. Y you know, we've, Ooh. we've got this and it put a chip on my shoulder probably, you know, fueled by all the other stuff of the day, y you know, and uh, at, at one point, half halfway through their set, Russ came up to me and he's like, yeah, man, you got to love those those brother harmonies. You know, he's like that, that really good. And without even thinking, I just looked at him and I'm like, yeah, they're, they're fine. But Aaron and I were better. Uh, like, we've got this, you know, and he was like, OK, all right. You know, like, sure. And um, I kind of communicated that to the band in what I hoped was productive ways. You know, it was like, but it was definitely fueled by frustration. They ran, they played a little late. They did not employ haste in getting themselves off the stage so that we could get on the stage. They ended at 1035. We were supposed to go on at 1030. We did not start playing until 1115. So it was like, it was more of the same I, fuel. And you've had a bad day. <laughs> if I've already had a bad day, but I'm still determined to blow them away. And by the way, we did like we, we were freaking awesome. Uh, that's cool. But I, you know, I also thought, you know, like I'm going to own the fact that we're playing last in fling. I'm the one that gets stuck being the, the, you know, the, the front man, the interface with the crowd. I told the band, I'm like, all right, look, when we set up, don't nobody set up in front of me. If you want me to talk to the crowd, like don't block, you know, nobody's, downstage center uh, you know I, stage centers for me you guys are off on the side we're five across not four and one and they're like yeah okay fine like they could tell like don't don't f with dave today you know and uh so he, i you know once we got ready i said to the guys i'm like let's just go you know i'm not gonna say anything we're just gonna go i said like, we're fling and then boom we powered through a few tunes and just crushed it you know because fling is a great power pop band and we got tight endings and beginnings and harmonies and like all the things. And, uh, and we knew our set too. So there was, there, it wasn't like, you know, we were guessing or anything. So right. we, we blast through a few tunes and then it's time for me to talk to the crowd while Russ changes to his open G guitar. Uh, and, uh, and the first thing I said was, you know, we really appreciate, uh, the dead archer, the label that pulled this gig together for, you know, for having the, the faith in us to make us the headliners for the evening. And, uh, <laughs> and I can see the guys in the van looking at me like, uh oh, like, where's Dave going with this? But then I, I made a joke about it. I'm like, usually that happens as the result of a clerical error. But today I'm 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 insured that that's not what it was that. I, and I was sort of laughing and tongue in cheek about it so, so that anybody who knew what was actually supposed to happen would get that I was joking. And anybody who didn't would not. But also the people who were in charge of making that happen would be like, uh oh, yeah, yeah. You know, like just a little bit like, hey, I'm the one with the microphone. You want it? You you chose this, you know, <laughs> and that is uh, hysterical. Now, was the other band around to hear this? Yes, they were. They they were not and? there for the very beginning of the set. I kept the clerical error joke going throughout. Uh, I, I found different ways of approaching it. And uh, so I brought sure. it, I brought it back a couple of different times. And uh, and they were the other band. The grip weeds were not there right when we started our set. I think they were still like dealing like they had moved some of their stuff outside and were like trying to like 
pack it into their van so that it was safe and all that. But they they were in there by about the halfway point of our set, which is sort of typical for a you know a scenario like that. So they definitely heard it and they loved it. They were laughing, you know, they were they were totally in on it. Uh and they they liked us too. You know, they were and even after the gig, they're like, man, they're like, you guys have five people singing. They're like, man, I wish we had that. And I was like, yeah, yeah, no, we love it. You know. Um it's great. Great story. Yeah. yeah it's actually <laughs> the story about the one of the first festivals we did this summer, there was a band that played before us. I can't remember if I told the story, so stop me if I'm if I'm being repetitive, but sure. I reached out to them about about comparing set lists so I, we didn't duplicate songs. Yeah, I remember you telling me this, but keep going. I'll stop you if it feels like we're we're in like total repeat territory, but keep going. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so I, I reached out and um, the guy sent me his set list and there was about four or five. And I said, well, we'll what we usually do is like a little draft, you know, like, like, you know, I pick one, you pick one, you know, and, and we split the difference. Yeah. And he comes back to me and he says, no, that's our set. Uh, we're not really willing to do that. Uh, maybe you should tell, because we were the headliner for that one. Maybe you should tell the promoter uh, to move you to a different day of the festival. <laughs> and wow. so, And so, yeah, so, a, a, you know, really jerk thing to say, right? Uh, and they were playing before. So anyway, we get there. And actually, I tell the guys in the band, I share the guy's email with the guys in the band. And not safe for for work you know responses here sure ultimately but ultimately we said all right well we're just gonna play every song they did and we're gonna call them out on it so sure enough <laughs> i love I think this. the band was called yeah so sure enough, every time there was a song saying hey you might have heard this before but you know we think with five horns it sounds even better you know like every single one of the songs that was an overlap you know we made a point of saying you know we like we you know People seem to like when we do this, you know, just anything to just kind of put the knee, the knife in a little bit. And I actually did send that note to the promoter saying, hey, this guy wants you to move us to a different day. I'm not in favor of that for what, forever it's worth, but I'm um, just letting you know, I tried to work it out with this guy. He wanted nothing to do with it. Yeah. And the promoter was, you know, he was like, ah, oh, that's, you know, whatever. Move, so, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Anyway. I like that. that I, I mean, it, what it, you, you sort of have to, I, I guess you have to make a decision going into these these scenarios where you know you're you're feeling slighted or whatever and you either have to do what what you know I did on Saturday and what you did at, at this other gig and just sort of own it explicitly with the with the crowd and just say okay well you're letting me do this after you and so I get the final say literally the final say to the the attendees and as long as you handle it in an entertaining way, then you win. It's how it goes. I, yeah. Yeah. On yeah. the set list, every one of the, so the guys knew. And on the set list, every one of the songs <laughs> that was a duplicate song, I put a little icon next to the, next to the song list to let everyone know this is one of those songs. <laughs> I love this. Good band bonding, you know, activity. And uh, it's funny because, you know, where you started this was that they were really good and you felt like you had to be on your A game. Which and I did. That was also true. Like all of these things. Were I'm going sure on. it is. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm totally sure it is. But it is, you know. My competitive side definitely on, came out. That's what sure. I, that's what I'm going to say is that yeah. like, like playing music on multi band bills is a contact sport. I mean, it is uh -huh. a competitive sport. <laughs> and, you know, doesn't mean you have to be a, you know, a jerk to other people. No. But it does mean like, you know, you're you are competing. You're competing for your own pride. You're competing, you know, to you know, win, be better at winning over an audience, whatever, whatever your litmus is, this is part of it. it to me, that's actually part of the fun of it, right? Like, I, I agree. I, I had a, a blast with ago. it. We, yeah. 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 I mean, you know, we need things to motivate us to take our, to take our craft to new levels and nothing like a little healthy competition to do that. Well, that's, and, and healthy that's competition exactly what, or, yeah. or when you're competing against people who are, who are kind of dicks, you know, that, that yeah. helps as well. <laughs> yeah. When the first band, I, I don't want to disparage anyone, but there was zero question that we could beat. That we were going to be better than this first band. I, you know, I, it's just a fact of the matter. It's how I interpreted it. But so but that didn't inspire me at all. You know, it was like, well, OK, like we're, we're there's like we don't have to do anything other than show up and play. And we're going to be we're going to be, you know, at least a notch better than this band. OK, fine. Not that they were bad, but I, I know how fling is like, you know, it's fine. And that was okay. But then when the grip weeds came out, 
and they were like, it was like, okay, like these guys can play, like, this is a good band that inspired me. I loved that, you know, and, um, and I needed to make sure, and I communicate, like I said, I communicated with the band because I needed to make sure that it didn't disparage any of them. Cause it was like, oh yeah, like this is a, this is a real band. Like they, they know they got it, you know, <laughs> like we gotta, we gotta deliver. And yeah, I'm proud to say, we, you know, we absolutely crushed it. It was so good. So it fueled me for the right. 90 minute ride home. Yeah. It was just, you know, satisfying. Yeah. All right. Look, I want to tell you about our sponsor, HelloFresh, where you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. You get to skip the trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun and affordable. And that's why it's America's number one meal kit. Look, you can make your home the hangout place this summer with crowd pleasing eats. From their backyard bratwurst bar to tangy key lime pie, HelloFresh Market makes summer entertaining a cinch. And this is great for those days where you're finally home. You don't have a gig. You want to stay home, but you want to have some friends over that you never get to see because you're out there gigging. This is a wonderful way to do it. And did you know HelloFresh offers more than just delicious dinners? It's now easier than ever to skip that extra grocery store run by adding snacks, sides, and more to your weekly order. Simply shop HelloFresh Market and take your pick from a curated selection of over 100 items. We've been loving HelloFresh here at home. Lisa and I use it regularly because it makes it so easy and it makes it fun because you get to prepare this meal together and HelloFresh gets that you want options when it comes to what to make for dinner, not just the same old thing all the time. And that's why they offer 40 recipes to choose from every single week. So you'll never get bored and you can always find something new to try and love. Go to HelloFresh.com slash GigGab50 and use code GigGab50 for 50% off plus free shipping. Again, HelloFresh.com slash GigGab50 and use code GigGab50 for 50%, a.k.a. 50% off plus Free shipping. It's great. You're going to love it. And our thanks to HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit, for sponsoring this episode. Did you play this weekend, Paul? I did. I had three gig, three gigs down the Central Coast, two with the, the group down there. Yep. The first one, we hadn't played in, in a month. And similar to what you're saying, we were, you know, not, not grooving. I mean, tempos weren't right. You know, feel wasn't right, but... You know, energy was good, and you know, we, we played our hearts out. It just wasn't there. Yep. And uh, and that group was actually really good. You know, it just kind of like mutually supportively. Yep. Saying, ah, oh, yeah, you know, we you know we can do better than that, that type of thing. Uh, and then the next day we played, and it was great all day. It was really uh, very pleasant. So that's, self-correcting that's nice. exercise. Yeah. And then I did a an acoustic gig. But so anyway, I sang what two, five, seven hours. You know, because I'm I'm. I'm, I sang all of it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I was pretty, I was pretty gassed by the end of the third one. Um, but good stuff. I mean, it's just, I just like the music so much. You know that the I love the house rockers. I mean, it's my baby, of course. But the house rockers have the house rockers are an interesting study. They are an exercise in compromise, right? So it's not all music I would have chosen, but because it's such good guys to play with. It's fun to even play music that I wouldn't have chosen. Oh, totally. Other, I, I the, totally get yeah, that. This, uh, obviously. Yeah. 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 And then the, the stuff down the central coast, I choose every song uh, and it's stuff that I love to sing and, you know, music I love to play. I get to play all the different styles of acoustic guitar stuff. So that's really, really fun for me. We're trying to play Mexico by James Taylor. And, tough song. Um, tough song. Really tough song. Just yeah. that little kind of calypso y, you know, vibe is not a natural groove. You know, for everybody. I mean, where the bass has to lay is very particular. The I bass mean, and the we, kick we drum. Found a version of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tough song. It's a tough song. Yeah, yeah. it's a it's a weird. It's a the, it's got a lope along. I, I would. It's interesting. I would relate that song. It's probably going to be surprising to the version of "Feeling All Right" that Joe Cocker does. Right. It it has that same kind of loping thing. It's a it's a different groove on top of it, but that, you know, that kind of that, that kick and bass that just need to drive, you know, and one into everything is super important. Yeah. And if you don't have that feel locked in, it's got a lope. It, 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 it's really important. Yeah. 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 yeah well, I mean, along those lines on, on 
Friday night when we didn't quite sync. That one was painful. Yeah. But we were determined, and we've only been playing it, you know, we've only played it live maybe three or four times. Sure. But we're determined because we love the song so much. And then on Saturday, it just all clicked in, and it was it was a really beautiful song to play. So good stuff. I, you know, the, 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 the human chemistry of making music is just an amazing thing, right? Uh, Same nope. guys, you know, uh, <laughs> basically 12 hours apart, you know, maybe 18 hours apart. Sure. And sure. Uh, all the mental notes, because we didn't debrief on the song or anything like that. Just, just everybody goes away and kind of absorbs what it is they did and what everybody else did and what they need to do and what everybody else needs to do. And just came back and, and it just flowed the next day. And it was two different songs to me. Yeah, it, it, it makes it. Yeah. It, it was tempo. You, you mentioned tempos and I actually have something to, an anecdote to share about that, but was, was one of the differentiators, you know, maybe the tempo was better the second day than the first day. Cause that can be a tough thing with new, new material. If you don't, know where the tempo needs to be you it's easy to easier to get it wrong mm. i don't know well, i start it on a on acoustic guitar yep it's pretty locked into my head mm. and um but it's also is one of those things where everybody knows it's kind of a, a delicate vibe yep and one guy might be a little tentative on it one guy might be trying too hard on it and the net result is it's not right you know so Everybody, like I said, went back. You know, everybody really w desires to play the song and play it well. It's just a different sound, you know, than a, a lot of things will do. And everybody's got the chops for it. Sure. And, and it sounded good in rehearsal. And so, like I said, you go away, you know, 16, 18 hours later, try it again, and it's magic. So it's, it's a funny thing. Yeah, it, it is. Yeah, it, it's interesting. We um one song, I, I would say 70% of the set list for Uptown is inherited from what uptown used to play right uh but we've you know we've we've changed a lot of it gary really is like i want to play more rock stuff now and it's like okay we should like we still like if the band is going to function the way the band has functioned there are some things that just need to stick around like it, you know the, the the dance stuff the wedding stuff september and like those sorts of things are kind of yeah. you know they got to be in the list he's like oh yeah no 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 um and, and, and he agrees with that, but we are throwing some more rock stuff in. And on Saturday for the first time we played that song, the look by rock set. Yeah. Uh, what a fantastic <laughs> song. We, we wound up opening our second set with it. We, we had more songs on the list than we needed to play. And Gary's vibe, you know, we ended the first set wherever we ended it, fixed the bass amp, you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, came back up and played. And, it was like, why are we, are we just skipping to the top of the second set? He's like, no, 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 no. We'll just keep going from where we were. And it's like, okay, like whatever, you know, it's weird to start a set with the look because we weren't thinking about that. You know, we had something else as like the, the second set starter. It was like, sure, whatever. And, um, man, that song, that was the song that turned the crowd to start paying attention to us. Like uh -huh. one by one heads started turning, for all the folks that were there because not like, everybody plays it. It's yep. a little bit of a different sound, a little bit of a different vibe has its own energy to it. I, you know, totally. That's, that's cool to me. I mean, I, I was going to respond cause you'd said we have the stuff that you got to keep in the right. Yeah. Because Don has been out for most of the summer. We've pretty much played the same set. Right. You know, right. Sure. Yeah. And you, you know who cares? Nobody, not a no person. freaking body. No, well, a other person. than perhaps people in the band, but, but that's well, it. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. yeah. And, and you know, there's, there's a lesson there, you know, people we, we used, well, the business model we used to have was like, let's turn the show over every winter for our busy summertime. And a goal would be about 10 new songs. If we get them, you know, we usually end up with six that would stick. And then by the end of the summer, you know, maybe four of those would still be around or something like that. Sure. And then, you know, I'd say the band probably has 150 total songs now, certainly 150 total horn charts. And um, we're playing kind of a greatest hits mm. set and it's going over great and it's effortless and you don't got to think. Which is not a bad play. thing when you're pulling in well, different sort of sub point. drummers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't know if it's a bad thing ever. I'm like, I'm really like, you want to keep the musicians in your band engaged and creating, but I don't know. I mean, oh, yeah. the, the things that are going on with the house records, guys having other things that they're doing and me having to travel 
And a lot of things, at least this summer, he's he's good. I I and, I just nothing. I I there were not a an insignificant number of moments leading into this uptown gig where I was like, man, I wish we were just playing like the standard GB list we used to play. You know, especially when I learned that we didn't have our bass player. But even before that, it was like, well. You know, we're doing our own sound. Like, there's just too many things to think about here. You, you, yeah. you know what I mean? It, it, so, yes. no, I, I easy is good for for certain things. I mean, I wouldn't say that about an original band gig. You know, like it's 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 a different vibe. But playing in a cover band, like, and and when the point is to entertain, like we were there to serve a purpose, and it wasn't to show people how great Uptown Celebration is. Like, we did that. Right. Don't get me wrong. But the point was to entertain, you, you know what I mean? And so like, let's, let's not lose sight of that. We can certainly factor the other things in, but the prime directive is we're going to entertain these people, you know? Well, I mean, we've entertained and we've gotten more corporate work, uh, private work than we've ever had in the past. So yeah, it's just, it's just a crazy thing, man. It's just, you, you, we all try to be so clever all the time. And again, I yeah. get it that we're trying to yeah. satisfy our own, you know, scratch our own itches for creativity and, you know, stretching our chops and learning more stuff and all that type of thing. But I'll tell you, something to be said for just having a great solid show and then, you know, playing it. Yeah, man. But, I'm with you. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, for for certain bands, that is the right, that is not the wrong thing. I don't want to say it's the only way to go, but but it is it is a version of right um, yep. and I will say, uh, I said, I had an anecdote to, to share about tempos a few weeks ago, maybe even more than that. I, uh, talked about how I put into my iPad, a visual click to give me the tempo to start a bunch of tunes in uptown's list, because there were so many songs that were new to me. And mm-hmm. the look is one of those where I, I like, I can credit putting the tempo into my iPad with why that song succeeded or perhaps why that song didn't fail. I don't want to take credit for everyone else's hard work and success in making that song work because everybody put in the work and it was great. But if I had counted it in too fast, it, all of that work would have been out the window, you know? And, and it's a slow tune, right? It's like, you know, it's got that, you know, it's got that, you've got to have that in there. And in the middle of a gig with adrenaline and distractions and all of that, the chances of counting that off at the correct tempo, uh, especially the first time I'm playing it live, are 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 less than I would like them to be. So I absolutely used my iPad to give me the tempo for that and and probably, you know, 15 other songs that day. And man, it's so great to just have that little like, OK, yeah, that's where we need to be. OK. Let me get that feel in me. All right. And then I counted Gary in and, you know, off we go. That tune starts with guitar. Yeah. But, you know, song, yeah. it, two songs that it, it reminds us. So we have Addicted to Love in our set, right? Yes. That's another one where you got to lock right it in. Right there. It yep. can't be, it can't be two clicks faster. It can't be two clicks slower. And yeah, those and hits after the choruses, even, right? Like, bah, bah, ah, right yep. back, back into the verse. It's got to have space. Yeah, man. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever played, um, Right Here, Right Now by Jesus Jones. Yes. Another one that's got that 16th note kind of pulse happening under it. Right. Yep. 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 Yeah, man. It, it, you just, it, you need good, you need good singers, of course, but you need good drummers and good bass players to make those things happen. Yeah. The one tune where, I, and I took full blame for this, uh, I did not get our keyboard player's attention before we started it. We're playing um, that tune, Levitating by Dua Lipa. And oh, yeah. again, a new song for all of us. And Steph, our singer, crushes it. Like it's it's a great song. But our keyboard player started it before I had like the tempo up. And and I get why he did. He wanted to just keep the set flowing. And uptown, we just, you know, we we don't take breaks between every song, right? You know, we just keep the set going. Mm-hmm. And he did. And I saw it on my iPad. Like once I once I got it going, I was like, oh shoot, you know, like this is probably 15 clicks too fast, you, you know. Mm-hmm. And um we got into the first verse and I hear Steph like choking on the lyrics, you know, and, and she turned around to me and she's like, whoa, slow down. I'm like, yep. And so we did, we slowed it down to probably seven clicks too fast. You, you, you know, like we split the difference as much we could in, in the moment, 
but it was like, yeah, we got it. Like that's one that that's another one where it's super important to get that right. So that, so that the vocals have their own bounce to them, you know, and can really kind of yeah. effortlessly. Well, we talk about there are the songs that you can do almost anything to, and people will still like them. And then there's songs that you can't. And then there's, that's so right. They're... Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's it. Yeah. Um, so I was happy to play these gigs on Saturday. I'm glad we did. Not only did it give us great material for, uh, for our conversation here today, but I, I enjoyed these elements of these gigs. However, my wife, you know how I come back from like South by Southwest and I talk about these sort of, you know, uh, one of a kind or rare opportunities that I got to see, like, like the big star tribute show or the sound city touring thing that only did like eight shows or something. That yeah. night, my wife was at a show like this and she now has her own stories to tell. She's not here to tell them, uh, but she went and saw at the, at Boston garden. So, you know, an 18,000 person ar arena, right. Uh, she saw this thing called the Jim Ursay band. Do you know anything about this, Paul? Have you heard anything of this? Okay. I hadn't either until we got emails from the Boston garden, inviting us to this for free. And that's really important. So Jim Ursay is the owner of the Indianapolis Colts. He inherited the Colts from his father uh, and all and and a great deal of his wealth. I don't I don't want to say all of his wealth. I don't know. I, my guess is he has continued to build it. He is someone who is uh, he loves like um, Americana. Uh, all kinds of things from Americana. And so he has this collection of of I would call it art. Things like Ringo's drum set from. uh when he played on the Ed Sullivan show, Jim Morrison's Ooh. microphone. Um, I'm going to miss things. I'm going to miss huge things. A, a ticket from a golden ticket from the movie, the Willy Wonka movie, right? Like he's got all of these crazy things and, and, and treasures. treasures. I have, I have barely scratched the surface and, <laughs> and he keeps this stuff, you know, this stuff arguably should, could be in the rock and roll hall of fame or the Smithsonian or both. And it's not, it's in Jim's collection and to his credit. And, and this is rare for someone who has inherited significant wealth. Um, he gets that he is, you know, in this rare position and also that this stuff should be seen by other humans and not just, you know, his, his friends who come to his house yeah. and, you know, see this stuff. Is this the Ursay family that owns the Colts? That's what I meant. Yeah. He's the, he's the Jim Ursay who, who owns the Colts. Correct. Got it. Yeah. And so he does this thing where he tours the country with his collection. Now, again, I'll remind us all that Lisa and everyone who went paid nothing for their tickets. So he pays to turn the lights on in the Boston Garden, which is no small sum. And then, sure. right. Th and, and that includes, you know, security and all that other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Th yeah. Then he uh, ships his collection or some significant chunk of it to the place where he's doing this and, you know, sets up a display such that people can walk through and see all of this. And then he puts a band on stage to play a three hour show of so, hits. But this band, um, Paul, let me just tell you who's in this band, who the band was that Lisa saw the other night. So Jim plays guitar and sings for like four songs. He comes out and does a couple of songs. He finishes the night with a couple yeah. of songs. Otherwise he lets the band do their thing. The drummer, our friend Kenny, right? Kenny Aronoff. So he's the he's the the house drummer for this band. The bass player, yeah, that's Mike Mills from REM. The guitar player, yeah, that's Kenny Wayne Shepherd. Yep. And then, wait, 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 wait a second. Uh huh. This this is like reeking of rich guys plate plate thing, right? Correct. But he gives the it away to people. Makes, yeah. Right. And yeah. the giving away part is the stuff that makes other musicians ticked off, right? Oh no, I think he, I, I mean, I, all the people that were on stage with him loved it. I mean, well, he, I'm he paid talking about, Oh, I mean, you know, if, if you're out there trying to sell Ringo's all store tickets to Ringo's. Oh yeah. You know, all stars. And, and the guy next to you is giving away tickets to see Mike Mills. And you know that, I mean, Ringo doesn't have to worry, but you get my point. I do like, get this, your point. No, is this, this, there is were this the, the most, is this the most expensive dad weekend band weekend warrior band in the world? Oh, I'm sure it is. I'm not convinced. I don't know how many of the musicians on stage 
are paid versus how many do it because they love Jim and what he what he's doing with this collection. He raises a bunch of money for charity at this event by selling merch and all, you know, all the proceeds from all the merch and any anything that you could choose to spend money on while you're there uh, all goes to charity. None of it goes to Jim. He doesn't need the money. Right. And he's okay with it. But I didn't finish with the band. You know, uh, he also brings in, you know, uh, uh, sort of pockets of talent, I will call it some local, some not so local. Some of the, there, I think there were three people he brought in. Um, he brought in Vince Gill. You've heard of Vince Gill, right? I've heard of that guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He brought in Kevin Cronin from Ario Speedwagon. Oh, Ario. Yep. And then he brought in Peter Wolf from Jay Giles band, which of Jay course, Giles, yeah. yeah. In Boston is a local band, right? Like, I mean, ish. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, yeah. And all they, right. So, so I'll back off a little bit. It, it's, it's a guy doing good to sing four songs but providing a lot of value other than that oh absolutely yes he does his he does his four songs he sang and i know you'll appreciate this for reasons we we probably won't spend a lot of time getting into but he opened the show with jim singing lawyers guns and money uh in front of you know with this with this all-star band sort of backing him um yeah yeah and then uh he ended the show with uh have a cigar and comfortably numb of course, you know, thinking of, and Lisa said, watching Kenny Wayne Shepard rip the solo on Comfortably Numb was, you know, life changing, which I can only imagine. And then they, end, they ended with Gimme Shelter. Yeah, yeah. But, but you know, like the Kevin Cronin who's the girl section. Singer? Go ahead. Sorry. No, I'm asking who, if they played Gimme Shelter, who's the girl? It, Lisa said there were three um, female singers on stage who were absolutely fantastic. And none of them were even mentioned, uh, when the band was introduced, she's like that, that part was sort of a crime. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but like the Kevin Cronin section, he played, take it on the run time for me to fly. Can't fight this feeling roll with the changes. Peter Wolf did half a dozen tunes. Must've got lost centerfold love stinks. I, you know, I, Mike Mills sang Rockville and Superman, Kenny Wayne did, you know, blue on black. He did a cover of call me the breeze. I, Lisa said this show was friggin' amazing. I, you know, and we had never heard about it before when it showed up. She's like, I don't even know if I should go to this. She's like, you're not going to be around. And then we started looking into it and I'm like, uh, I'm pretty sure that you should go. And if anything happens with my gigs, I'm coming, you know? <laughs> yeah. Cool. So if you get the opportunity to go see this thing, and any of the stories I've ever told about, you know, seeing these sort of one-off ish things, it's not a one-off. This was the 10th of these that he has done since 2019. So my guess is there it's will be more. It's a 10th show. It's a, sh- it, what's that? It, he does, the sh- he doesn't do tours. He does one-off shows. He does one-off events. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So this was the 10th one. Will there be an 11th? I, I would presume so. I, but, you know, but I don't know. Uh, yeah. Crazy. Three hours. She said it was, you know, going into something like this, you kind of expect it to be loosely organized and there to be gaps between, you know, time gaps as performers can sort of come on and off the stage. That was not the case. She said this was like organized like it was a theater show. It was just one after the other. Kept moving. No dead air. <sighs> crazy. I runs a tight ship. Yeah, man. Yeah. He knows. He knows how to entertain. So, yeah. yeah. Cool. So. I figured That's I'd share story. that story. If you, yeah, if you get the opportunity, go, uh, go check it out. I, I would. I wish I did. I'm happy I played my gigs, but this would have been a nice, nice consolation prize if everything had fallen through. <laughs> Any, we got anything else? Good. All right, folks. Thanks for hanging out with us. It's been yeah, uh, thanks. Yeah, it's been a blast. Feedback at giggabpodcast.com. I think we are taking. In fact, I know. We are taking next week off, but we'll be back uh, once August starts. We'll see you, I believe, we'll on the always first. Always be performing. We will always, always be performing. Always be always performing. Be perform- always be performing. Always be performing. Always be performing. Always be performing. <laughs> <laughs>